All right, everyone, it's Dealer Destro back with another Modern Era GI Joe review. And with this video, we are going to be looking at some new product. And I'm very excited. Um, yes, I'm a club member. No, the club did not send this to me. Um, no, I did not sign up for figure subscription service that this guy was offered in. Instead, I am choosing to like be really picky because a lot of what I'm seeing with with this particular offering like started off strong at first and it's just kind of been like as far as parts used i'm not really feeling a lot of the recipes however this figure is an exception because this guy looks good and yes he is reused parts um i want to say he's a one for one uh, recoloring of the charbroil we got in the Night Force offering and the club just took an opportunity probably to get get the most bang for their buck uh, for a mold and I can't blame them because from what I'm seeing so far just looking at this this looks like a good figure this looks like it will shape up to be a solid offering um, but we will uh, you know, we'll tell as this as this video progresses. So, card art as per the usual from the club, pretty much what you'd come to expect. I mean, it's 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 great. Um, I I love that they're still doing like the vintage uh, homage to the vintage packaging, um, and you can tell just you know looking at him in there, he looks good. Man, does he look good! And then as per the uh, standard with the club offerings, you get the full, like, full-blown artwork. Um, it lets you know that it's a G.I. Joe Club, Club exclusive. I want to say probably from the fifth run, figure one in the run, licensed by Hasbro, all that jazz. So let's just get down to the meat. Um, here's his file card. And... Uh, I don't know, I don't have the Night Force one handy. Um, I have it, it's around here somewhere, but I wanna say this is a straight one for one except the colors have been updated. Like they just used the, the vintage color template on him. So there's that. Hopefully y'all have had a chance to pause and read through that. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some, some, club, <laughs> some club figure extraction here live uh, for this video. So what I like to do, I like to take one of these puppies and hopefully I don't gash myself in the process because, uh, man, uh, you know, if you're a customizer and you use these, we've all done stupid stuff with these a time or two, and hopefully we learn from them. Um, but really what you want to do is, you know, you always want to cut away. And what I do is I just, I just gently work this in until I, I yep, until I'm in the bubble there. And then I'll just take it and I'll just gently let it glide and kind of just do its thing. And sometimes you're left with like raised pieces of plastic on the card. And me, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, as long as I preserve the card art, I, I like to avoid cutting into the card. But sometimes that's just, sometimes it's unavoidable. And I mean, that's just the, it's the nature of the tool, I guess, or whether or not how steady your hand is. Like me personally, I don't have what I, what I would call a surgeon's hand by any means. See, as you see there, I kind of, I kind of let it ride up. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back. I'm just going to start the process again. And there we go. And sometimes with these, like you got a tendency for this, all I do, is I just give it a little snip and there we go. We have a preserved card, and this will go in my, my club file stack. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And here's what he comes with, comes in with a bubble. Just comes in the standard card bubble, so we'll just, I guess we'll just get him out and we'll just talk accessories real quick. So he comes with his signature, oh boy. I'm gonna have to come in here again ever so slightly, just give a little on the tape. And this looks like I can just give it a little right there. And hopefully this will just pop right out. Yep. Okay, so 
Comes with the standard issue sidearm. We've seen this already, so I'll just chuck that to the side. Um, and then his flamethrower. So I don't know if this is a one for one for the vintage cast offhand. I didn't have the vintage uh, version of this figure, unfortunately. But he does come with a nice looking backpack. Same one again as the Night Force figure came with. And that looks good. That looks good. Great attention to detail here to the flame tanks. I like that they broke this up with a little bit of black paint apps. Me personally, I would have tried to get like silver in the dial there with the, with the red needle. But that's just me. And maybe, you know, maybe I'll take a paintbrush to this guy. I've been known uh, to do that. I've been known to get silly with it. Um, so anyway, so this hooks in like so. Hose is pretty flexible. But then you have this, and I love when I love when they do stuff like this. So there you got a hollowed out spot in the flamethrower. Peg goes right in, and voila. Just like that, you have glorious flame effect. And that is amazing. So that's pretty much what he comes with accessory-wise. Uh, I guess it's worth noting that he comes with a Stiggity Stizand, two peg, codename Charbroil. I love when they do this because this keeps like the 25th tradition like running. Like some of the later, and I get it, it's got the updated G.I. Joe stamp, but some of the later offerings, I mean, it just was like Charbroil, Ricondo, Dusty, Beachhead, Flint, Duke, or no, Conrad, Duke, Duke, Hauser. I appreciate this. This is, this is, it just adds that little nostalgic touch that we were used to seeing when we had the 25th figures. So anyway, uh, enough rambling. I'm going to go ahead and put these to the side and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll talk about the figure itself. All right. So I got the figure here and man, let me tell you, just giving it like a quick once over this guy, this guy's good. Um, so I don't know. I, I should have probably went and looked on yojo.com, but I don't know if the vintage one had the face underneath. And if it did, this might be a little bit of a cop out. But really, I mean, you see how this dude's geared up? Like, you're not going to display him, I guess, without the helmet. So, helmet looks great. Um, paint is really clean on the eyes. And that's like the only stuff that's painted. So, I guess just, just for. Review sake, taking a look here, this looks like a recycled maybe beachhead head or maybe the the Tiger Force character that was like an homage to beachhead. What's his name? Wrecker or something like that. I don't remember his name offhand. I didn't get that set. But anyway, um, so even that underneath looks relatively clean. And I appreciate that. Like I appreciate that, you know, they took the time to neatly address the flesh tone and then it was thoughtful to paint the eyes on there. So anyway, so putting the helmet back on. Um, you do have like these yellow-esque highlights on here. A uh, little crazy right there, but whatever. I mean, again, we're talking about a four-inch figure with a lot of paint apps and some and some very uh, you know detailed work going on in here. So uh, these pockets on the arms are painted, and as per the usual with yellow, it does tend to get a little little crazy in there. And I mean, whatever, that's okay. Um, looks like these hands. I want to say just first impression looks like these were completely sculpted. Oh no, we got some paint. So I don't know if that's showing well on the camera, but you kind of see the transition to where they painted over the joint. And that kind of bothers me when they do that because this is such a difficult color to work with. And if you're going to include that extra bit of articulation, I mean, I'll give it to them. It's not like it's not flaking off like my sky creeper did, but should be noted that this is a potential QC problem. Um, it does look good, but I would appreciate, you know, uh, if when they're doing stuff like this, just cast the hand in that color. I, I don't know how much extra it is, you know, um, whatever. I mean, we're not involved in those discussions as fans, right? I mean, we can only critique and offer our opinion. So, I mean, my opinion would be if you're going to go for this, this hard, difficult color to work with, like orange, just cast it. I mean, cast it. You're you're better off than than messing with painting it. However, having said that, they did paint the red on here, maybe, or maybe this is cast in red and they painted the silver on here. I can't tell. It looks so good that I can't tell, and that's good. 
that's a good thing. And looking at it, this looks like this is actually cast. Yep, they sure did paint. They sure did paint it. And I mean, and the fact that they didn't paint the back, whatever, that's not a big, that's not that big of a deal. Um, because this is, again, this is one solid piece. And I, I guess I just noticed that. Um, so the red paint on here, great paint apps. Great paint apps. Red is just one of those colors, man. Like red, orange, yellow. When you start working with those colors, you're kind of asking for trouble unless you like got your, your paint techniques down. Um, anyway, moving down. So yellow painted on the pockets on the on the pants there, and that looks clean. Uh, the knees were uh, cast in the the silver plastic, I guess. A um, couple should be noted. A couple sprue marks there, but whatever. I mean, it's just you know that's the uh, cost of mass producing these guys. Um, lower legs. The uh, legs here look to be from the Retaliation Trooper. However, there were. I recall there being some tolerance issues um, on a lot of mine, so the fact that they address those in this run here, uh, you know what, this looks good. Good to go. Um, maybe would have liked to see some black to break this up. I don't remember what the vintage figure looked like, but I will probably be doing some black just to kind of, just to break it up a little bit more because, I mean, from here down, that looks really plain Jane. Um, but. I mean, other than that, like the silver, the red, the silver, the yellow, the orange, the silver, the, the silver, the red, the yellow, the silver, it, this figure flows really well. I really think it flows very well. And this here so far, like what I'm feeling tolerance wise, etc., this feels to be like a solid figure. This feels to be a very solid figure. Great materials. Um, it, it's, we'll just get right into articulation, I guess. So, yep, yep, can't ask for anything else. You really can't. Um, no, zero obstruction if you wanna go the three the crazy 360 degree route. Elbows on this sculpt were a bit problematic, but you see here like this, you kinda of get the full range here, right? But then moving over here, it just, it kinda of flares out and, and whatever, and I got, I don't know what that is. That's uh, that's just from the sprue, I guess, from the sprue mark on there, from the joint. Um, you get, you know, you get left to right, little bit of little bit of like an ab. Um, the head, pretty good. You can get left to right, and and it's just sometimes like with these helmeted figures, when you start doing that, it kind of it kind of breaks up a little bit. But I mean, whatever. That's just. I, I guess I'm nitpicking at that point. Um, will he sit in a vehicle fine? Yeah. Yeah. You can bet on it. You can count on it. Um, does the double knee joint work? Yes, the double knee joint worked very well with this figure. Um, the other thing, too, is you do get the updated ankle joint along with down, and you really don't get any up, but that's fine. I mean, you can pretty much get whatever pose you want out of this guy. And I must say, again, Great, great attention to detail here. And I, I get it. This is a rehashed figure. We've seen it with the Night Force um, offering. This here, this is, I mean, if you can do it right, and what I mean by that is if, if I'm, when I'm piecing together like a custom figure and I'm using these hands, what I do is I make sure that, that, these here, I actually exacto knife this joint and I remove the hand and then I sand this down and I'll paint it. Put it back together with some super glue while while moving it so that way the glue bonds to the peg that's in here and you, when it dries you still get the range of motion. However, because it's sanded, you know, the, the technique I use anyway, because I sand and then paint, I can do this all day long after I paint and I got zero concerns about like paint rubbage or inconsistencies. So like right here, it's pretty clean, but like here, and I'm not sure how good that's gonna show up on my camera. Like, let me see if I can get a little, it's probably as close as I'm gonna be able to get, but here's fine. And then like right around in here is where it, it you can see that it, there's some, some paint rub going on. And again there, I mean, that's that right there, I hope is pretty noticeable. Like. You got the gloss finish, and then and then it looks like this might have been cast in like a lighter orange, and maybe they just try to touch up the paint. 
And anyway, I mean, if I'm just talking about the hands having problems, right? I mean, we're, talk we're talking about hands, not the figure, not the figure, not the figure. We're talking about the hands. I'm probably nitpicking a little bit more than I should be, but again, at the price point to play here at this level, I, I gotta, I gotta let you know. I mean, I gotta let you know all these, these weird little things that go on with the figure. Um, the silver around the cuff is is really clean. I mean, other than that, these are. I acknowledge the fact that these are very difficult colors to work with, and yet they nailed, they nailed it, they nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, with a little bit of line work, questionable. For the most part, they nailed it. I mean, I don't know, like, this to me, reused parts aside, I want to say this is this is mostly like a retaliation trooper, um, but reused parts aside, this figure captures the essence of what they were going for. I think that they have a, this is a solid figure. They have a solid figure here. This is a great offering. Um... He is go he's he's going between thirty and forty bucks on eBay, Feebay, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would say if you're going to add this to the, your collection and you're sitting on the fence, don't wait. Pull the trigger, pay the secondary market price, work out a trade on the boards. I'm sure he's going to start popping up on the boards. People that bought the set, they don't want it, whatever. Um, start hitting the trade the trade sections. Uh, and me, I, I might watch for another one to get listed on the club store and then take that route so maybe I can have one carded. But if I don't, not a big deal. He's in my collection. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and get him geared up. I'm going to put him on the 360 degree, uh, 360 degree base so you can see him geared up with the flamethrower. And uh, we'll, we'll come back and talk some, some final words, final all thoughts. Alright, so here he is in all his glory. And I'm just going to fire that up real quick so you can see. Um, he has no problem holding his gear. I mean, heck, he only comes with a flamethrower and a pistol. But um, is this figure worth getting? Here's the deal. If you're like me, and G.I. Joe is your main line, and every year since they've been doing this, you're kind of... I mean, either you bought the set or you didn't, and you're waiting to pick and choose to see how these figures come out, like, in hand. I can tell you that I knew from the moment this image hit, I wanted this figure. There's a couple other figures in the line that I'll get and I'll do videos on. And if they hit the club store, my, my videos will come up late because with everything coming out, bouncing between this and Transformers, like, you know, uh, Bills, kid, uh, wife, whatever, I'm at a point where I got to pick and choose. And I opted to get this figure. I'm, I'm contemplating getting another one to keep on card once they start hitting the store. So, yes, it's a solid pickup. It's worth every penny. Um, is it definitely it captures the essence of the character that they're going for in my opinion um, So I, I don't know that I would sit around and wait to see what the price on this guy does I think what he's going for now There's a lot of people that are that look and appear to be selling him just to cover the cost of the figure So right now he's still hovering at about MSRP for what you would pay if you would have subscribed to the uh, service anyway, so those are my thoughts. Um, again, if you're a Joe guy, you probably have already decided. I hope that this video, you find it informative and it gets you something that you need one way or another if you're on the fence. Um, so that's that's my thoughts on this guy. I'll leave you with that. The club nailed it. They got a winner on their hands. This is definitely worth a pickup. So I will end on that note, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time, take care and catch you guys on the flip side.